Yeah, why do you guys recommend uh, there's uh, fasting components in here too? Oh yeah, fasting. Fasting is so rad. Okay, so when I was in graduate school, I basically studied fasting for five years to try and determine whether that was an effective insulin sensitivity recovery tool mm. okay, for mice and rats that we had created insulin resistance in. And the answer was uh, in, intermittent fasting is so powerful at rescuing insulin sensitivity. It's mind boggling. It's way more powerful than I thought, right? But beyond that, as you know, intermittent fasting has become one of the most popular dietary trends on the planet. And it, actually I didn't think it was gonna catch on as much as it did, but it did, right? So intermittent fasting is a phenomenal weight loss tool. It's a phenomenal tool to actually like reset your relationship with food and teach you your actual biological hunger signals, as opposed to your like social hunger signals that happen every single time, you know, it's, it's mealtime or because you smell pizza as an example, right? So it's a simple way for you to determine when you're actually biologically hungry. You can kind of feel and sense the hunger that's coming from your actual muscle tissue, as opposed to the hunger that is coming from your brain. Um, and what we do is we teach people living with all forms of diabetes and heart disease, how they can use intermittent fasting as a tool, as one of the tools in their, in their arsenal to gain insulin sensitivity, lower their body weight and reset their relationship with food. And when they do that, they find that they actually are able to lower their A1C values, lower their cholesterol values, lower their triglyceride values and achieve much more ideal, uh, biomarkers for both cardiovascular and diabetes health within a much shorter period of time than they had anticipated. Nice. Is there a, you, you guys like a 12, 14, 16, 18 hour, what, what's the, what's the time restricted feeding window that you prefer? We recommend 16, eight. That's what I've found to be like, kind of like the magic tipping point. Okay. Uh, what do you intermittent fast yourself? I do. I do. Uh, most days I do intermittent fasting. I even did a five day fast one time for the podcast to try it. Uh, day one was fine. Day two was kind of horrible. Day three, <laughs> suck balls. Um, day four and day five, I, I felt actually pretty good. But then I, then I, when I broke, broke the fast where most people like go to IHOP or something like I, just, I had like a kale lemon drizzle salad, like just to kind of slowly get my digestive system back into things. But every now and then I'll do a 24 hour fast, maybe once every few months, but yeah. yeah, daily is generally, I stop eating around seven and my first meal is around 11 o'clock. I will have a coffee for a workout. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm right about that 16 hour every now and like if I'm up, um, on the weekend and my son is having breakfast, I just kind of like want to eat with him, you know, just for like a, you know, a bonding thing. But yeah, most of the time, 16, eight. Yeah. Most of the time, 16, eight. Okay. Perfect. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that's actually like one of the more sustainable ways to go about the intermittent fasting game, mm -hmm. because a lot of times when people try and do a 24 hour intermittent fast, like it can be pretty rugged, Yeah, you know, like that 16 to 24 hour window of time where you're just like, Oh my God, like I'm, I'm very hungry and I'm a little hangry and people don't want to be around me. Right. Yeah. So if you can kind of like get into a mode of doing a 16, eight on a daily basis, like it may suck for the first week, yeah. but once you get into it, it's actually not that big of a deal. And it's, it's interesting how your brain and your digestive system who are talking to each other 24 hours a day, um, end up, you know, be developing a new sort of equilibrium at which point, you know, the meal that you're no longer eating, you just, you don't even generate a hunger signal at that time. And as a result of that, you're like, cool, I used to be hungry in the morning. I'm not even hungry in the morning. I don't think about food and everything's fine. Yeah. I mean, for me, getting that workout in, in the morning, one mentally, I, str I struggle with depression. So getting the work at some sort of movement in the morning and getting some light and all that sort of stuff is very good. But yeah coffee about an hour, hour and a half after I wake up, not to like, you know, right, right away as an alarm. And then I get that workout in. And then, you know, by then it's almost 11 o'clock and being able to have that meal. And I like eating big meals. So I like the, the fasting aspect of it is like everything I eat is basically out of a bowl, like a big ass bowl, yeah. eating one, you know, once or twice a day. And just like, it's like a half an hour, you know, marathon session. I just, I feel good about it.